tradition, did I ever tell you about my first sword trainer? Back when I was young, our branch of the Ko Lin family didn't have grand monasteries or beautiful practice grounds. My father found a teacher for me from two towns over. His name was Harth, a young fellow, not a true sword master, but good enough. He was very focused on proper procedure and wouldn't let me train until I learned how to put on a Takama the right way. He wouldn't have stood for me fighting like this. You put on the shirt, then the overshirt, then you wrap your cloth belt around yourself three times and tie it. I always found that annoying. The belt was too tight, wrapped three times. You had to pull it hard to get enough slack to tie the knot. The first time I went to duels at a neighboring town, I felt like an idiot. Everyone else had long, drooping belt ends at the front of their takamas. I asked Harth why we did it so differently. He said it was the right way, the true way. So when my travels took me to Harth's hometown, I searched out his master, a man who had trained with the Ardens and Kolinar. He insisted that this was the right way to tie a takama, as he'd learned from his master. I found my master's master's master in Kolinar after we captured it. The ancient wizened Ardent was eating curry and flatbread, completely uncaring of who ruled the city. I asked him, why tie your belt three times when everyone thinks you should do it twice? The old man laughed and stood up. I was shocked to see that he was terribly short. If I only tie it once, he exclaimed, the end hangs so low, I trip. I love tradition. I've fought for tradition. I make my men follow the codes. I uphold foreign virtues. But merely being tradition does not make something worthy. We can't just assume that because something is old, it is right. Much like the traditions that have been passed down from swordmaster to swordmaster, the way we do statistics is merely tradition. That once served a purpose that serves a purpose no more. And it ought to be done away with. What is the old way of teaching statistics? The old way focuses, focuses on hypothesis tests. And the goal of any stats class is to find the right test for the occasion. Using a decision tree like this. Very, very cookbook style. And it doesn't teach you how to think. And I'm going to address a lot of other problems with this. The old way is very procedure oriented. We are told that we first must identify the appropriate test, then state the null and alternative hypotheses, then compute the test statistic or the p-value, then compare that test statistic to the critical value or the critical p-value, and then make a decision. This is just like tying your takama three times. At one time, it served a purpose, but it doesn't serve anymore. At one time and for one particular situation, it served a purpose that is no longer relevant. Joe Rogers, who is a co-author on this paper, was given a presentation once, and in this presentation, he showed the syllabus for his introductory stats class. And if you were to compare the topics covered, it would look no different than what we would see today. The order and organization was essentially identical. So the curriculum hasn't changed in 50 years. Do you think the world has changed in 50 years? Yes. Do you think statistics has changed in 50 years? Yes. Can you imagine teaching like an introductory biology class from 50 years ago? That would be ridiculous. And yet that's what we're doing now. We are teaching essentially the same curriculum from 50 years ago. And this curriculum was designed before computers. That's kind of a big problem. Because 50 years ago, all these statistical procedures we did, we had to do by hand. And the order and the organization of the original stats curriculum was designed around making hand calculations easier. But now that we have computers, there's no need to have that curriculum anymore. It does not make sense to use it now. The alternative way is to use a model-based approach, more specifically the linear model approach. So remember, the linear model looks like this. Y is equal to B0 plus B1X plus B2X2 plus blah, 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 blah. Adding as many predictors as you want. And those predictors can be categorical, they can be numeric, they can be continuous, they can be integers, they can be squared terms, they can be polynomials, they could be interaction effects, they could be lots of different things. And that's what makes it so flexible. And by the way, nearly all introductory statistical procedures like the one sample t test or the one way ANOVA or the two way ANOVA or the independent samples t test, all those are just different manifestations of the linear model 
Or another way to put it is you can use a linear model to run any one of those tests. And for that reason, it simplifies decision making. Rather than having to go through this ridiculous decision tree, all you have to ask yourself is what is my dependent variable and what are my independent variables? That's it. So it makes it so much easier to decide on the right analysis, which frees your mind. Free your mind, matrix style. Free your mind. To spend all your time studying and interpreting the results. And that's kind of the irony. The old way of doing things makes it easy to make a decision because if P is less than 0.05, then you've made your decision, but it makes it really hard to figure out the right test. Whereas the new way reverses that. So it's very easy to decide on the appropriate procedure because it's all just a linear model, but a little bit more difficult interpreting the results, which is exactly how it should be. And why is it more difficult to interpret results? Because you have much more information. You have plots, you have estimates, you have diagnostics, you have prediction values, you have prediction intervals, confidence intervals. You have all sorts of tools at your disposal that you can use that you don't usually have with the old way of doing things. So let me just highlight and summarize some problems with the old way of doing things. One, it's super confusing. I have taught intro stats for a long time and nobody gets it. Usually not even the teachers. You're just supposed to memorize this incoherent list of tests and be able to pick the right one, but it doesn't actually give you an understanding of your data. Another problem, and I will briefly review this if you want to see more again, see the paper, is that it doesn't teach students to develop cognitive maps. There was research done several years ago that compared the cognitive maps that students developed to that of experts. And what they found was that students, not surprisingly, saw various topics in discrete chunks. Like, here's ANOVA, here's t-test, here's mean, here's variances. These are all very distinct topics. Whereas experts rightly saw them as all interconnected. Doesn't that seem a little weird that the way we teach stats is training students to have poor mental maps of how statistics actually works? That's kind of a problem. Another problem is that it masks the underlying logic of statistics. It's similar to like learning how to play a song note by note on the piano without actually learning music theory. And the problem with that is you might be really good at playing that one song, but that's it. And anytime something doesn't work, you're screwed. But if you understand scales and chords, you can improvise, which is what teaching from the linear model perspective teaches students to do. Another problem with the old way is that it reinforces a lot of bad habits, such as binary thinking. It trains people actually to think in terms of significant versus non-significant. And there are a lot of people who say the replication crisis was caused by our over-reliance on these statistical tests. And there's another problem. It fails to prepare students for advanced methods because all the advanced methods are just extensions of the linear model. And so if they never learn the linear model, they're kind of screwed. They have to redevelop this bad cognitive map to fit within the way that statistics is actually taught at advanced levels. And I would say that the biggest problem with the way that stats is currently taught is students are not taught how to understand their data. Isn't that kind of the purpose of statistics? To understand your data? And if we reduce all the information to a p-value, have they really learned anything about their data? No, not really. Especially given all the problems that p-values have. So now let's talk about the advantages of the new way. The Dustin way. And actually that's not true. This isn't my method. I mean, I certainly have my own unique flavor on this, but lots of people have been advocating for a model-based approach for years. And I will leave links in the description as well as the paper that mentions lots of other people have been talking about this. So the advantage of the new way, one is that the linear model is the foundation of almost all statistical procedures. Like in this table, as you can see in this table, just about any introductory stats test can be used within the linear model. Another advantage of the linear model approach is that it prepares students for the advanced procedures. Mixed models are just linear models for each individual cluster. Generalized linear models are linear models, except we add a link function and we add a different distribution of the residuals. Structural equation models are just like a bunch of linear models estimated together. And Bayesian methods are based on the linear model. They just have a different estimation procedure, typically using MCMC and combining priors with the data. The foundation of all these procedures is the linear model. So if you have a strong understanding of what the linear model is, you are set. So why aren't we teaching the linear model from the beginning? 
Another advantage of the linear model approach is that there's like this huge, massive toolbox that becomes available to the students once they learn the linear model approach. So the old way of doing tests, you might get means and mean differences and maybe and p-values. With a new way, you got parameter estimates, you got visuals, you got confidence intervals, you got p-values, you got diagnostics, you got residuals, you got predicted values, you got all these different things. Not to say that you can't get these things from a testing perspective, but it's just not emphasized like it is with the linear model approach. And a final advantage is that it just simplifies software. So if you look at the SPSS menu for choosing analysis, it is ridiculously complicated. There are so many options and it's super easy to get overwhelmed. But if instead you do things from a linear model perspective, there's just one menu item. Like in this example, in JASP, using the visual modeling module, which I developed. Oh dear, so many options to choose from. It's so much easier. So there's a question I'm gonna ask you that I've been asking for years. Why are we still doing the old way? And the best answer that I could come up with is tradition. Just like in the story that I mentioned at the beginning, people taught what they were taught and they assumed that there is something magical about the way they were taught. Not realizing that sometimes the decisions they made were pretty arbitrary or they may not even apply anymore. And I've had so many discussions with intro stats teachers who just cannot conceive of why a linear model approach is better. And it kind of blows my mind. But unfortunately, if you've been teaching for 20 years, using the old way, it's gonna be really hard to change. It's really just a problem of inertia. One that requires lots of people like you and me pushing against the norm. So how do we move forward? Well, I suppose it depends on whether you're a teacher or a student. If you're a teacher, I hope you adopt a curriculum that doesn't do this sort of decision tree hypothesis test approach. So there are lots of resources out there for you to use. One of them, which is free, is my textbook, which I will leave a link in the description to that. But it's not just my textbook. There are lots of textbooks out there that teach a linear model approach. If you're a student, you can take a class with me at simplistics.net. And by the way, starting the first Monday in January, on Monday afternoons, I'm gonna be teaching a mixed models class, which is an extension of the linear model. But hey, you should check it out, because it's awesome. Or you could always do a self-guided class, either a mixed models class or a linear models class or uh, our class. Or you could sign up for the February Simplistics class, which is really the intro stats class. And whether you are a teacher or a student, I encourage you to push the boundaries. One thing that I always do is when I write a paper, instead of saying I performed a t-test or I performed an ANOVA, I always say I ran a linear model and I have received pushback from dumb reviewers who are like, clearly a linear model isn't appropriate. You need to be doing a t-test. Yeah, that's the same thing, dude. Same thing. So will you push the boundaries with me? Cause I'm sick of pushing them by myself. It's getting kind of tiring. We need to change the way stats is taught. Are you with me? And like I said, if you want more information about the topic that I just presented, uh, feel free to see my paper linked in the description. And it's open access and that's cool. So, yeah. And once again, if you want to take a stats class with me, visit simplistics.net. I will leave a link in the description to lots of different classes you could take. So, I hope to see you there. Peace out.